the session here today has been talking about a number of ways to deal with the bucket elevator issues and uh, deal with maintenance and whether it's taking care of the belt, the buckets, having a monitoring system. But the last section here, I want to specifically focus on preventative maintenance. Um, now, for those of you that are in the session today, I realize that there's going to be a wide variety of your position in the bucket elevator or as a millwright or someplace in the organization. But um, you may be a manager and at one time in your past, you were out doing the maintenance and you had the hands on, you knew everything that was going on. But now you're a manager, you're in the office, you can't get out there and see those things. And so you wonder what's going on. Very simple thing you can do. Maybe a lot of you already do this, but when you send your people out to do their regular maintenance on the bucket elevator or any other equipment in your facility, have them take their phone out and take some photos and keep those photos a part of your report. That way you can see if the belt is in the right position. You can see if the, uh, uh, the guards are on the V-belts. You can see what the boot section looks like in the boot pit for that matter. Uh, maybe the sump pump quit working and it's full of water. Uh, but it's important. So that'd be one way for you to stay in touch with what's going out there, even if you aren't the one that's going out and doing the maintenance anymore. In considering um, preventative maintenance, one thing that gets overlooked so much, and that is the throat plate. Now for just a minute, we're gonna turn on our little model bucket elevator here so I can show you something. thing you notice it took a while for this thing to get up to speed. It's got a, uh, a variable speed soft start to start up. It's really nice to have that so that you can uh, get up to speed without it jumping right away. But the thing you may have noticed is that when it finally got up to the correct speed, the product is being thrown out and not coming back down so much. But a main reason for that is because of the throat plate. You can't see it in there necessarily from, from this view here, but we're going to show you some close-ups so you can see how close that throat plate is to the edge of the buckets when they come around to make sure the product goes out rather than coming back down into the boot. Getting back to one thing we talked about earlier with a lap splice on your belt, if you want to have your throat plate up as close to the buckets as possible with a lap splice, or with a butt splice that's not going to be as possible with a mechanical splice because you have to have enough room for that lap splice to come around. Could be an extra quarter of an inch away, could be three eighths, could be as much as a half inch away depending on the thickness of your belt. And that means that for the majority, the vast majority of the amount of time that that belt is going around, you've got an extra gap between the throat plate and the edge of your buckets. So that's a really important reason there to think of why you might want to use a mechanical splice as well. But missing a throat plate or having adjusted improperly is going to mean a lot of product is going down. That means it has to be re-elevated again. That means you're using energy that you shouldn't have to use. Your capacity is based on, on what you thought you were going to be able to get. And so the, uh, the conveyor that's feeding this leg is trying to go at a certain amount. You could end up plugging the bucket elevator, causing a real maintenance issue. So, Going to show another photo here that shows when a customer called me out and they said, we're having trouble um, plugging the boot. And I got out there and I said, well, let's go up to the top of the bucket elevator. And I'm sure they were wondering, why do we want to go up there? But you'll see from the photo, it wasn't a matter of adjustment on this throat plate. The throat plate was completely missing. So what that meant in this feed mill is that a lot of product was going right back down into the boot. And as it went down into the boot, what's going to happen is it's going to overload it because the conveyor feeding the boot is gonna go at a certain capacity. The bucket elevator very quickly cannot keep up with that since so much is coming back down. The throat plate is incredibly important. Make sure you check that out. Something else, preventative maintenance. I'm sure most of you are aware of it, but that is being sure that your lining material is in good condition. Now, a couple more photos I'm gonna show you here show lining material, which is using urethane in the inlet, and then also lining material in uh, the discharge area of a bucket elevator. And as you look at these photos, you'll think, how in the world can that possibly be so clean? Well, once again, these are photos from that uh, uh, event that we had with Chief, Chief Manufacturing at their dealer days, and I was uh, happy to get some nice photos to show an inlet 
with good lining material and a discharge area with good lining material. You can use urethane, ceramic tiles, things like that. Now, some people like to stay away from ceramic. It's a great material. The time we wouldn't want to use it is especially maybe in a feed mill where you've got a, a roller mill going because if you had ceramic here and some ceramic comes off, it goes down the line, gets to that roller mill, it's going to cause some major damage to your rolls. But that would be the only thing I could think of where it's a real problem. A couple more photos, and, and these just boggle my mind. Uh, different applications, different locations, but I can tell you, if you are the person that's carrying the wrenches up to the top of the bucket elevator, and you don't have a man lift, and you're doing it on a ladder, it's gonna be something that's uh, something very uh, easy for you to do to just leave the um, guards off of the V-belts. You think, nobody ever goes up there except me. Well, you can see application here, number one, no, no guard on the V-belts, very dangerous. Next one, different situation, no guards on the V-belts. Now, of course, if you go up there, the bucket elevator should be locked out. Should be locked out so that you can't go up there and have someone start it while you're up there. But even so, these things should be covered, the guards should be put back on, no matter what kind of maintenance you're doing. You'll notice in this photo as well that the V-belt guard is missing. The entire drive package has been modified. The motor is in a different position than it normally would be on a bridge tree on a motor mount. If it's on the motor mount, it's going to have the ability to be moved forward and backward and side to side so that you can line up your V-belts properly and put the right tension on them. Also, the speed reducer position has been changed so that the torque arm has had to be modified. It's been cut off and welded into place. Now, that torque arm is supposed to be mounted on this side of the reducer at about a 90-degree angle from the input shaft to the output shaft, and that may not be the case right now. If that's the situation, it may be causing more stress on the internal components of that speed reducer and shortening its life. But once again, getting back to the V-belts, of course, if you're going to modify the drive, you need a belt guard to match the length of the V-belts. That's missing in this case, and so it's still a dangerous situation. So those are all things to keep in mind because you want to make sure the bucket elevator is running as best as possible, and so you want to have all of these things in place and working properly. Now, one other thing is that you might have parts and pieces available to be used at, at the drop of a hat. You think, well, we've had this bearing go out on this bucket elevator before. We always want to have one on hand. Well, as you can see in the, the last couple of photos I've got here where a bearing happened, happened to be a 4 and 15 16 bearing. So this is a pretty expensive bearing, uh, not in a warehouse where it can be a nice uh, environment and kept clean, but this was at the top of the facility. Um, and as I got up there, I asked them why it was up there, and they said, well, but if the bearing ever goes out, then we have to get a hoist to lift it up there. I mean, this thing's incredibly heavy. You can't just carry this up a ladder or stairway. You can't put it in the man lift because it's too heavy for that, too. So you'd have to get the hoist out. You have to mount the hoist up on the, uh, uh, the arm up there at the, the top of the head section. And so rather than do all that, they're just going to leave the bearing out. Well, I guess the bearing probably will be okay when you put it on, but it certainly looks like it's taken a lot of abuse before it ever got to that point. There's a lot of maintenance things we don't have time to talk about today. Things that I probably didn't even come close to talking about that are happening in your facility or maybe that uh, you know could be coming up soon. We want to make sure and talk about those in the question and answer time or make sure that afterwards you get in touch with us. But these are the main points that I could talk about today. We're going to wrap this up in the next section, and then we'll have time for your questions and answers.